Welcome to the Venus and Mars Show, and as usual, we are so happy to have you with us tonight. I'm Peter, or Mars. And I'm Mary Lee. Temp New Venus, just for one show. Mary Lee is joining us as Venus tonight, as Anne, our regular Venus, could not make it tonight. Mary Lee, do you want to tell the audience about uh, your background? Two quick things about me. Sure. Well, I run the best events calendar in Plymouth at Plymouth123.com. And I also have a show, which is how we met. That's right. Uh, yeah. the, the Plymouth Show. The Plymouth. And by the way, com. and by the way, Mary Lee just agreed to be on the show ten minutes before we started filming. So <laughs> I'm very grateful to her that she came on. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. We have a couple of special guests tonight. We have Captain Richard Stack of the North Attleboro Fire Department, and we also have Dr. John G. Anath. And we. Uh, it's a mouthful. Yeah. Well, shall we bring them on? Sounds good. All righty. <laughs> Captain Rick Stack of the North Attleboro Fire Department has come on our show for a second time to continue to discuss his concerns about uh, PTSD. And tonight you're going to talk about some, a need to change the culture? Yes. Welcome to our show, first of all. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, fire tradition is steeped with the culture. A lot of good things and some things we need to improve on. I, and I, my humble opinion is I think we need to improve on the mental health aspect of first responders because of the sheer, the sheer job we do. Now, when you say the culture, what does culture actually represent? Are they, is it our culture is or is it no the way it's yeah no it's you, understood you mean when you're like new in the fire wink? service yes when you're wink, new in the wink, fire service not, not, right without yeah, yeah. You, like, you, are, you are you are told to uh, there is no weakness there's persevere not, yes there's nothing you can't do it's not a job you can't do not a person you can't save to a certain extent um, nothing you can't do because if you have that doubt if you really think of it if you have that doubt in your mind running into this dangerous situation. It's not really valuable to you. You have to think you're You can't be dangerous, but you have to think that you're a little stronger than whatever's facing you. But when, what ends up happening is you see so many traumatic incidences and so many traumatic scenes and so many patients. Um, it starts to take a wear and tear out of you. And you don't realize it until it's too late. Now, of course, none of that trauma that you witness or any of your fellow um, firefighters uh, come across, um, how much of that do you actually see in a given time, like six every six months? I mean, how many incidents are there? Uh, it, it depends. It, it depends where you're working. Because um, we never see it in the papers or anything. They don't even describe any right. of that stuff. There are bigger yeah. cities, small cities. The volunteer, I happen to be a full-time uh, fire captain. There are small departments. There are volunteer departments. But each one of those departments sees their share of trauma, be it medical or, uh, or through uh, fire, um, you know, traumatic circumstances that makes them question at least it has me. It made me question my vulnerability. You know, I'm wondering because trauma is an integral. Is that integral? Inter yes. integral. integral. Well, integral. integral. No, well, no. Oh, yep. man. Integral. Okay. Same word. <laughs> Part of the job. I mean, yes. by definition, yes. if you're a firefighter, you're going to be in traumatic situations. Okay. So I'm wondering, is there training in how to deal with trauma? When I came through paramedic school 27 years ago, I'm a graduate of Northeastern University, uh, paramedic school. Um, Wait, what's was PEMREC? Paramedic school. Oh, I'm paramedic school. Yes, <laughs> I, I tend to speak fast. Okay. I apologize. Um, and yes, I want to say maybe there was a half a page in our 400-page book. So it's kind of like doctors not learning anything about nutrition. Right. I get it. They, and, and uh, 
a former chief of mine said it uh, the best. We're given a ton of resources. They throw money at fire engines. They throw money at our equipment. They throw money at our stations, breathing apparatus, on and on and on. But we don't seem to realize we need some money to take care of ourselves. Sure. And that of mental, course. and our own mental well being. Has it always been in the fire service? I've only been a firefighter for a little over 20 years. I've been a paramedic over 27. And from what I see, it's always been there. Okay, so let's say this. If you have a, a, a real concern, and I'm talking about um, this, some stress that you need to, to let you, do you have anywhere to go right now? Do they, is there, we have, they just, you know? We have stress teams uh, um, that you can go to. With, uh, you can approach um, an officer and or a union member um, and tell them that you're looking for help. But at least on, in my case, and I know I'm, I would say I'm the norm, if I were to do that, I would automatically think I was labeled as being weak. Because all these people looking at me, say, say, say I'm your captain, and I go to the chief for some help, and then one of my subordinates finds out oh, yeah, that I, I went I, for help. I, Whoa, is yeah. this person really trustworthy? Yeah. Does this person really- Cut out for the job. Yep, and they, it yeah. makes you start second guess. Um, a lot about and labeling on that person. Yeah. When that person's honestly doing the best doing thing exactly and showing- exactly the right thing. Right, and that's you know, a sign of strength. I have to say, you're a hero. You're amazing. Thank you, I don't-, I don't. No, To be, and okay, and I'll, I'll deflect it off of you. Anyone who is a first responder, especially a man who's willing to come forward and say, you know what, there is an emotional impact and it needs to be addressed, and it can't be seen as a sign of weakness right. to ask for help. In fact, I think you're pretty screwed up if you don't need help. Right. So I, I just want to really thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I but, you know, in 2000, we're here in 2018, and of course, there's a long way we got to go in a yes. lot of areas. However, we've come a long way. There was almost a cone of silence back in 60s and 70s. I remember my brother saying when we had a problem, my twin brother, we suffered in silence. And right. was, I'm talking about in anything. That's right. In other words, you know, whatever. I mean, it's like uh, if your, your father was had a drinking problem, was hitting you, nobody ever knew about it. Nobody right. knew about it. No, what I'm getting at is now everything's, you, you can, you, you should be able to feel as a person that you can not admit weakness, I need help. Right. Listen to me, please. And that is no, probably, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably I'm one not, of the most <laughs> humbling things I've had to do, is ask for help. Because I'm a very uh, proud individual. All first responders are very proud individual individuals. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's knowing your limitations as well. So how, how would you like to see this uh, further come along, this culture uh, We kind of broach the subject of uh, education. We need to educate more first responders out there. We need to get more education in the paramedic programs. We need to get more education in every first responder profession. Okay, okay but are you saying that from the, the, and I don't mean lowest level, I meant the, the, uh, the, the person on the, the front, if you will. Yes. They need to be able to speak, encourage them to speak up, or you're yes. talking about the, the superior is listening. <laughs> well, it's both, it's yes. both. Right. It's yeah. both. And we need it coming from the educational institutions as well. It could be a part of the CE programs. programs. Right. Yeah. I mean, that right. doesn't necessarily change the culture, but it at least forces people to listen. Yeah, and, and, and it's very new. Even though it's been in the fire service a long time, mm. from everything I read and everything I've seen growing up, we still not... I don't think we want to accept it because we are proud. Uh, yeah, well, and, it, and, and it, it takes a certain fabric to be cut out to be uh, a first respondent. I, I'm not just I'm not pandering. I'm not fawning. It's something that I, would not appeal to me. Just my right. makeup. Just something I wouldn't want to do. Right. Because it's hard to do. You got to see blood and guts and who knows and violence and whatever else. So you know. So 
it might go along with the territory, sort of the thinking is hard to separate. And, and it all comes down to the basis that we see things most people shouldn't. And we sign up for that. But we also need to understand that we need to deal with the feelings that come with the baggage that comes with what we see. And without dealing with those feelings, it has a cumulative effect, and it builds up. Can I bring up something controversial? Certainly. Sure. Okay. We welcome it. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, at least the first responders that, I, that I've known, I think many people become f firefighters uh, or, you know, similar similar professions, they adopt those professions because they actually suffered trauma growing up. That it, in many cases there were, you know, alcoholic families mm -hmm. and Lots for example. Yeah. And so they they were the caregiver in their family. They're the person who made sure that their little sister or brother wasn't beaten by usually dad. Yeah. Or um, you know, and so there is there is a in a for in some cases there is a foundation of of abuse and drama and trauma that you might actually you know I don't know if trauma is cumulative, but you know you go I think many people go into those professions just like a stereotypical woman becomes a nurse from that same background. Right, right. Yeah. Because they want, they are, they have been conditioned to be a caregiver. Yeah, and stress is cumulative. At least it has been in my life um, from doing this so long. But it's, I can't really mm -hmm. see myself doing anything else because I love being being a first responder. Yeah. Um, now with my, as since I was diagnosed in 2015 with PTSD. I might have to shift that, that thinking, but still help. Maybe now it can help the first responders on the other end of things. Yeah. Now, are you spearheading any efforts here yourself, or you? Um, I'm actually. Uh, I would like to start. Uh, I've already obtained my first master's degree. I would like to obtain my. On that, thank you. Uh, I would like to obtain my second master's degree in um, uh, counseling. It's not going to be a third one, is there? No, uh, <laughs> no I should get my PhD, just, but not Yeah, in, in television. Oh, no, I'm there's no... <laughs> so that, I kind of have this uh, driving force within me that wants to help, still wants to help, but I just have to help in a different manner. And I know there's a significant need out there, even though people don't want to admit it. Right, now, you've, like, um, you've said, it sounds like... Uh, oh. It sounds like you have maybe done enough time in the field, mm -hmm. and now you want to move to another level and yeah. help. Is yeah, it? yeah, I like it because you need some rest from that stress that you probably, you know, not rest. Uh, and, and I think I, I, I bring a different perspective to counseling, having been on that front line. Absolutely. Um, so people could talk to me as a as a peer, uh, not only as a counselor or I could, if I was licensed, but as a peer. And peers are always, I think, easier people to talk to rather than a professional that doesn't know anything about what you do. It certainly gets you a lot of credibility. Right. Well, Captain Rick Stack, we want to thank you for coming on our show and thank sharing you. more of this ongoing um, goal you have, I guess. I'm trying to think thank of you. a word. Yeah. I mean, it's not a goal, but this movement. Yes. It's a mission. It's yeah, a I mission. mean, help me out yeah. here. I'm sorry. I was trying to think yeah. of, yeah. I still want to help. Yeah. And thank and you for uh, coming on again. Thank you. And, glad, and hope to see you again on thank our you. show if you're more than willing to come. Thank you. So nice to meet you. All righty. We're joined by Dr. Janji Ananth, who is a commissioner with the American Asian Commission. Thanks so much for dropping by the show. Thank you for yeah, having thank me, Thank you for Marilyn. joining us, Chanji. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be with oh, you. Thank you. So the, the technical name for it is Asian American Commission. But that, <gasps> what that, did I say? Don't worry, everybody. Oh, no. no. <laughs> But we're I'll close, though, yeah, right? yeah, we're, we're close. close yeah. <laughs> we're on the same continent. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but 
one of those big cartons. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I have to tell you, it's such a pleasure to be with you. And uh, you know, I spoke to Peter. I actually met Peter at our Justice of the Peace yes, Association. We're both justices. <laughs> we're, both, really? we're both justices, so we handle <laughs> oh, weddings. Oh, fabulous. And, uh, and I walked up to him, and I saw him. He said, I said, you look like you're from TV. I mean, doesn't he look like he, like. He looks know, like, like he's the world's most interesting man. Yeah, well, both yeah. of you look like you're from TV, too. So I, I just, you know, I was so amazed. Can we have you on all the time? Oh, <laughs> so, I, I'm just, I, I'm a scientist. You're I'm good speaking. for the show so far, Joe. Book him. Book him. Okay. He's so cool. <laughs> so, I, so I walked up to him. I said, wow, this guy has to be a TV star or something like that. But so I, I did like, say, well, yes, yeah, sort of. I yeah. didn't say yes. Yeah. yeah. Sort of. Sort of. You yes. are. Yeah, cool. Said, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. I went like a, shh, don't say it too loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I have to tell you, it's a real pleasure to have well, to be with you. Well, we're happy to have Believe me, I mean, can't wait to hear what you have to say about I, I, you have so little time to tell the audience of what you, well. You know, and it's great to have this audience, too, because I, you know, uh, it's nice to be out here in Plymouth because I think that uh, it's good to reach out to all different communities. And this is one of those places that, you know, doesn't get as much attention from our state. Uh, you know, in terms of politics, in terms of focus, and I just wanted to make sure that I come and connect with. Now you're out of near here. Worcester area. I, yeah, I'm from Worcester. Okay. And uh, it wasn't that bad of a drive, actually. It wasn't uh, actually. I, I like it a lot out here. It was very, uh, very moist. Yeah. Uh, very dewy <laughs> air. <laughs> no, you know what? No, that's what they no, always say. No, Plymouth, home of the boy, moisture. What, 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 <laughs> Well, you know what happened here 400 years ago, right over here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> little details, little yeah, things. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so that's how we met. And then uh, I remember that... It was uh, just a week ago. It was just yeah, Sunday. Just, Come on. Just this yeah, Sunday. It was this Sunday, yeah. And, uh, and so he did, in fact, tell me that he is from television. And so, uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit, and then he invited me to a show. And, and then I, I, I saw the flyer for your show, and I was like, wow, these, th this is really cool. Uh, you know, and such a great topic you have, too, uh, Venus and Mars. And, and if you have that topic, I, I would... original. You know, really? <laughs> no, no. Where have I heard that before? No. <laughs> I got, okay, so, so here's the thing. If, you, if you're Mars and you're Venus, what planet can I be? How about... Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not even a planet Uranus, anymore. no. no. <laughs> just kidding, I'm not, I don't know you that I well. I couldn't okay. go that way. No, this is a G-rated show. <laughs> it is a planet. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> so, uh, no, so, okay, so the question is... Pluto's not a planet, by no, the way. Yeah. Apparently, it is yeah. a what planet, planet <laughs> would you like to be? Ah. And why? Well, he already took Mars. Huh? Well, well, yeah. it's, not, it's, yeah. it's, it's all He's bluster. He's that kind of yeah. It's all bluster. How about Mercury? It's really? Kind of, yeah, Mercury. Oh, Mercury. Yeah. Yeah. Mercury's hot. Hot heads. Yeah. yeah. Hot head. <laughs> <laughs> I like Neptune, though. Neptune's good, yeah. Neptune. Neptune. Yeah. Actually, I played a role as well. Neptune was kind of is king, moist. I was King Poseidon. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I that long ago. Well, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. now, before he leaves, can yeah, we, we hear a, about the we, committee? That's right. Of course. We the, commission. About, yes, the commission. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, my gosh. Thanks for keeping us grounded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Venus, Venus is keeping us grounded. The, gra the <laughs> that's, gravitational. That's <laughs> when you know you're in trouble. When Venus is keeping you grounded. Jonji, speak. True. Very true. Well, it's a real honor to have an opportunity to speak about a lot of important. Uh, one, one is the commission. I feel that a lot of people are not as aware that there is an Asian American commission with our Commonwealth, and uh, the goal of this commission is to inform the state on legislation, to go around and find out about what the needs are, the status of the Asian. American in Massachusetts. And uh, quite very interesting uh, facts that we're getting back slowly. We're starting to realize that Asian Americans uh, have a lot of issues with immigration. Well, you know. Join uh, the club. Join the, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> there, there are a lot of healthcare disparities uh, within that community as well uh, in terms of access to care. Uh, and also in terms of quality of care because of language barriers and ah. uh, cultural sensitivity, those kinds of things. So it's kind of interesting, you know, it's like stuff that the average person doesn't think about as much, but really you can gauge the, uh, what, is, what is the expression? You can, you can gauge the wealth of a community by how they treat their most disadvantaged people. Uh, and, or how good you are to someone well, who... Well, that's how far they reach, is yes, what you're saying. Their yes, reach of, yes, yes. Uh, so it, it is important for us to try to connect with with the most far flung people uh, in our in uh, well, our yeah far flung I know I know right yeah far, we, far reaching is what I'm now, trying to get at when I hear Asian I mean Asia is a large place and so relative to the Massachusetts population can you 
do you have a sense, and maybe you don't, you know, where in Asia the people who now live in Massachusetts, where they identify? Absolutely, yes. We have a very large Chinese American community, a very large Indian American community. We have a lot of Cambodians, Vietnamese, Japanese, even Taiwanese. Yeah, because I grew up in Braintree, yes. and I still sometimes go, I'm not living Braintree is not in Asia. No, 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 but I go to, you go to <laughs> oh. Quincy. You go, no, you go to Quincy, and there are quite a community of, Viet, I don't know, of Vietnamese or Cambodians. I don't know uh, exactly right. what they are. I right, see the yeah. signs change, but yeah, I've noticed that. Uh, right. You, you would be surprised, too, how many Indian Americans there are, especially in my neck Absolutely. Absolutely, you know, we have, a lot in Worcester. We, we have uh, actually w one particular apartment complex I'm thinking of, but they're actually 95% Indian. And I was like, wow, it's almost like they transplanted the building straight from India with the people still inside, you know? It was so amazing. You're not going anywhere until we move. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, oh, where am I today? But those are, you know, just the, the, the ethnicities or nationalities that you just mentioned, I mean, that is broad. My yeah, God, it's, yeah. it's kind of I mean, like saying, you know, what are you... What are European, um, you know, con right. yeah, concerns? Yes. I mean, it's broad. Yeah, it's interesting. So that's one commission. Mm. I, I think it's nice for everyone to be aware exists, and you know, definitely, uh, you know, call us at the state house and, and be connected with the commission, whether you're Asian American or not. Do you they know? have a website? Yes, uh, aac.org, and uh, you know, the thing is that. You can always be in touch. Uh, you, you can always just call the state house, and, and they will connect you with uh, our executive director. But uh, I, I think it's important for people to know, whether you're Asian or not, it's always good to be involved with all these different groups. Uh, so this is one of them, and it's a really great group. So definitely, you know, I'd love so to are there sister or brother <laughs> commissions <laughs> for? I mean, I just never, I wasn't aware of this. Yes, so. yes. There's this the commission You're on a status. Venus, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I'm a Gemini. No. I'm a Gemini Venus. Prickly. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Really? I, I, I had guessed. I had guessed, actually. So, uh, what was I saying? Okay. That's why I'm being so quiet. The right. sister and brother <laughs> <Yeah>. organizations. <laughs> what are you, by the way? You, you must I'm be. I'm Scorpio. Scorpio. Yeah. Okay. All right. See, I didn't guess that. Surprise, you... surprise, surprise. Scorpio from Mars. That is interesting. Yeah. Perfect. You're, so, you're intense. You're the intense one, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh Make my God. No mistake the, about He'll it. cut you. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> Mercury, like Mercury. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, yeah, so there are other ones, too. Uh, there's one called the Commission on the Status of Women, which uh, I, I find to be a very uh, interesting commission. Uh, there are actually about, um, there, there are a lot of these commissions, and they are for various groups. There's a plethora commissions. Plethora of commissions. I'm surprised they don't have a commission on commissions. They probably do. <laughs> <laughs> so, coming out tonight. Plus, yes. I figured what the first one where we said it sort of two different ways. What was that word again? Entourage? No, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. No, forget it. Know. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> important. And this is important for you to continue. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's just fun, you know. Yeah. I, the thing is, I just wanted to come hang out with you. No, uh, violence, hang out with though, you both. too. There's other things you're doing with violence, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's Against an interesting way you put it. Against violence. Yeah. Oh, not no, with yeah. violence. Yeah, well, yeah. You're not Be very with specific violence. in your words. <laughs> plethora. John, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm involved in a plethora of things involving <laughs> violence. <laughs> I, I'm engaged with an entourage. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, anyway, uh, yes, so I'm involved with several, um, you know, as a volunteer, uh, I participate with uh, a lot of uh, groups that uh, advocate to end domestic violence. Uh, one is the India Society of Worcester Crisis Committee. Another one is uh, an organization called Saheli. Uh, and I'm part of a group called, um, another is uh, Jane Doe, which I, I'm a White Ribbon Day ambassador, which, you know, you can all come and participate. I, I definitely encourage you to be in touch with these organizations. And basically, um, and, and Crisis Committee is not as specific to domestic violence. It's more about crisis, helping people when they are in crisis. And we all have them, right? Yeah. You don't have to be uh, indigent to be in yeah. crisis. Nope. There's another word, big word. Indigent? It, wait. In, indigent. Indigent. Oh, yes. <laughs> indigent. <laughs> no, not indigent. You could be indigenous and indigent. Indignant. indignant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're, we're horrible. Just, <laughs> let's just start this it's from the top. Horrible. It's horrible. 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 No, horrible. <laughs> she sounds just like me. <laughs> Turning into you. So now, rubbing off on it. Not only are you an MD. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm a physician in training. And that actually is where it came from. Okay. In your field of study, quick. 
quickly? Uh, so I will be, I, I'm actually finished my medical school. I'll be starting my residency soon. So I'm not specialized just yet. But what I am involved in is uh, I actually got inspired to help survivors of domestic violence because of the people that I met in the course of my medical school. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's and, wonderful. you know, one of the things that I noticed, you know, we, we had the gentleman on talking about mental health in, uh, in firehouses. Mental health is one of those kind of areas that I would really like to see uh, improved. Uh, I, I feel that people are doing a good job. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by a lot of the people who are in mental health. We have some great healthcare providers. You know, we have really dedicated, talented professionals. And I feel that sometimes as I'm going through it, I notice opportunities for improvement. So I'm like, oh, you know, this, if we could just do this different, if we could just change, tweak this a little bit, you know, we could make so much of a difference. It's a shame that we always can see almost every aspect of our lives can be improved, but what always holds it back, though? Why is it always talk and no action? Mm. Because you know, people are averse to change unless they have a tremendous motivation. Like a fine? <laughs> like a fine? Or <laughs> right, like, like jail. No, <laughs> or, you know, yeah. or just no, no, I, everything I falling We've, apart. Right, right, absolutely. And you're right. I mean, part of it is, in my, my humble opinion, this is uh, maybe not scientific, but it's just I always find that change is incremental. It's big changes, and so... Uh, realistically speaking, you know, sustainable, when you, change, sustainable change is incremental. Right. Absolutely. And uh, so, especially in in something as, and we have seen some positive improvements. Uh, it's not to say that nothing has changed. I mean, we've we're getting there. Yeah. But uh, for example, I'll you give could you. Could be whitehead by the time we know. <laughs> <laughs> I might be back to back. Yeah. <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> yeah. Take me. <laughs> you look great, though. That's why it's I said you looked on TV. But I, I'll tell you. Um, so one example uh, was uh, with domestic violence. Sometimes it gets mistaken for mental illness. You know, people come in and they'll say, oh, yeah, well, I feel anxious or I feel depressed or, you know, that sort of thing. And then they'll get medicines for it. And oftentimes, it may be an expression of a circumstance that's going on that may not be a disease, but it is actually something that's uh, more social uh, than, uh, than medical. And you mentioned earlier a little bit, uh, Marilee drew it out of you, actually. If um, somebody wants to look at more into your efforts and your commissions and the, all the things you're doing, is there somewhere they can go to to find out more? Yes, absolutely. So there's Did a I website, right? Saheli, yeah. yeah. Saheli.org. That's uh, the Saheli website. India. S wait a minute. Sa Saheli. S A H E L I. Okay. It is, uh, it's an Indian word. It means. Um, uh, female friend, actually. So I guess I would be a Sahela. So Sahela. oh, there is an, there's a the uh gender thing at the end. It's a gender uh thing. The, yes. again. the uh <laughs> is the male. Yeah, the uh is as a, opposed to Spanish. Yeah, it was yeah, always in the a. Yeah. yeah so so right. some, sometimes it's a little bit awkward introducing myself as a yeah, Sahela. Well, I'm learning every day. Believe me. <laughs> I'll, walk with, is, I'll walk with I am. <laughs> I don't fit in anymore in this world. I'm bad. <laughs> You know, the thing is, we could just keep talking after this show is done. We'll probably just keep talking after that, too. You know, it was so much fun. But I'll tell you, so that's one, one place. You okay. Uh, there is also the India Society. I encourage everyone to go to isw.org. So that's where you can find out more about the Crisis Committee. Okay. ISW is India Society of Worcester. Um, and, you know, generally speaking, I mean, if it's not these organizations, just get out there. You know, yeah. it's always great to participate, be part of a community. And uh, it's good for you, too. I mean, it's not, it's not all sacrifice, but partly you do feel that sense of community. You do feel like you're, you're making a positive difference. And uh, I think that uh, it's something that, to take away from this, at least, if, if nothing else. You know, just get out there. And, and I would love to, love to be, participate with you, love to see you, and uh, you know, love to do this sort of work. Well, we want to thank you for coming on our show, really. It's thank been you. great having you on. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you again. If you want to come back, you Absolutely. Want to, we're, yes. we're here. Thank you. <laughs> I'll come back to Venus and Mars and any other planet. There could be two Venuses and one Mars. The way it's going. <laughs> the way it's going. No, there could be Venus and <laughs> Venus. <laughs> we don't need Mars anymore. <laughs> uh, we can so explore cool. that. He was boorish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he was boorish. Good riddance. <laughs> My Such world is gone that I used to have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.
Well, that was a pair of very interesting guests. What do you, would you, would you gather from all that? I, so much energy on with were, John G, and then so much. Not, I'm not going to use the word sadness, but I mean, what you know, this being able to come turn, come to terms with um, with the the stress thing, and, and being able to admit it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it was really. Uh, it was, they were two extraordinary guests. Yeah, they, and uh, yeah. very different of what we talked about. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was. It was. We turned, <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, that should do it. That's, that's the end of uh, this, this episode. Wait, that's the end of it? Oh, yeah, no, this, okay. that's the end. Right. The show is that's over, sadly. Um, until next time, I'm Peter. And I'm Mara Lee. Where planets align but often collide, have a good evening. Thank you for staying with us.